So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I'm going to share with you uh, something about right-wing, ultra-right-wing Zionist Christians and how they get fooled. How they get fooled and who they get fooled by. I'm going to give you a few examples of this, right? And <clears throat> so there's an article that was written about me on two days ago, May 2nd, okay? And uh, the title of the article in this uh, Zionist newspaper is Interfaith Maryland Imam Tells Muslims to Arm Up Against Trump Supporting Neighbors. First of all, that is completely a lie. I never said such a thing ever. And those of you that are, you know, I'll put a link to this, uh, this, this page. Uh, and, and you can answer in the comment section uh, saying that I never said any of these things. That would be appreciated. Um, but I want you to see the level of deception that these people play, right? Because the person who's reading this, uh, the Christian, the blind Christian, the naive Christian, who's reading this breaking Israeli news, believes, right, that the news that he's reading is the alternative news that tells you the truth, okay? And so this is the alternative news that tells them the truth, and so they're going to eat up every single information that's given in these... these uh, uh, websites. So the title is uh, Interfaith Maryland Imam Tells Muslims to Arm Up Against Trump Supporting Neighbors. Okay. I did give some talks and I will continue to give talks about Muslims getting arms, especially after what happened in New Zealand. We all know that what happened in uh, New Zealand uh, could happen again and will probably happen again. And I talked about the fact that there would be copycats. And then he quotes this verse in the Bible in Genesis 16, 12, that is a verse that is very often in Christian circles used as a way, to, as a derogatory way of putting Muslims down. And that is, he shall be a wild ass of a man, meaning Ismail, he will be a wild ass of a man, which actually doesn't even mean what they're trying to imply it, because this language has, you know, between 6,000 years, 4,000 years ago when this was written, uh, you know, 3,000 years ago when this was written, and now there's a big difference of how language is understood. When you see an animal that's independent and strong in the wild, uh, when you are living in the wild yourself, uh, that is something that people would appreciate. His hand will be against everyone. So they're trying to say this, see, the Ishmaelites, the Muslims will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him, right? They don't emphasize that part, but just that his hand will be against everyone. What that means is that this wild animal right, does not want someone to make, tame him. He wants to stay in his natural environment. He doesn't want to leave that natural environment. He doesn't want to be domesticated by the Israelites. He will not be domesticated by the Israelites. So his hands will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. And he shall live alongside all his kinsmen, meaning the Ishmaelites uh, and the, the, uh, the Israelites will live alongside each other in peace for uh, for for centuries, as we have, Muslims have lived with Jews in Spain, in the Ottoman Empire, in complete peace. Uh, not this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this false media. Okay, then he puts this verse there. Okay, uh, and then uh, he puts this picture there. Right, it has nothing to do with me. It's not my picture. It's a stock picture of a man shooting with a gun. Now he's trying to create these images in the innocent Christian mind. Right, and then, more importantly, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Wait, this guy, Adam Aliyuha Berkowitz, is who? He is a person who used to be American, probably still carries the American passport, but he made his Aliyah. Let me show you this. Adam Aliha, okay, uh, features the writer of Breaking Israeli News. He made his Aliyah, meaning his Hijra. He left the United States. To be where? To be with the Israeli IDF army shooting Palestinian Christians and Muslims. And you think this guy is feeding you the truth? He left America. And now he's just creating divisions within America. Okay? Uh, he made his Aliyah to Israel in 1991, served in the IDF as a combat medic. Okay? Uh, he studied Jewish law and received rabbinical ordination in Israel. Okay, so here's a rabbi, quote unquote, who left the United States, joined the Israeli army, carried a weapon himself, yet he has a problem for a Muslim to say Muslims need to protect themselves and to have 
things that are needed to de defend themselves. Firearms, I don't think he remembers, but I think I should just remind him. And I challenge you, you take any of my direct quotes on this article he's written, there's nothing there, absolutely nothing there. And even whatever little pieces he did uh, try to, you know, put together, like there's this one statement, um, which I'll, I'll share with you in a second, right? Uh, I said, yes, you have, a Muslim should be ready to die. That's every imam says that. Every rabbi should say, say that. Because we don't know when death is coming. That's just silly. And I specifically say that I'm saying this from a spiritual perspective. The first thing is, many Muslims are going to pass away. That's a fact. Partly because of Israel. You know, Israel is going to be going and bombing like it is just right now. Bombing in Syria. The first thing is the spiritual aspect. All theories and thought and and, and feel of control aside. We, are we ready to die? That's a very basic spiritual question, okay? Uh, Bloat said every human being is going to get this virus at some point. Um, the first thing, the most important thing, is ex to be accepting of Allah. I was saying the, the virus is here, and we have to accept the will of Allah. I have to know that this virus can kill me. Yes. So what's wrong with that? What does it have to do with arming people, right? Uh, or, or people defending themselves? That whatever Allah has written will happen. Really, right now, we really need to get serious, authentic, and be ready, and be, be ready, uh, and really be focused. The world is about to change, and you have to accept this mentally. I think that's fine. I still stand with that. Uh, we need to only buy from Muslims. Yes, I believe in Muslims becoming strong, and we need to have a yellow page of Muslim businesses. I'm still strong with that. We even need to create a currency that is our own. Well, we can't trust this paper money. Uh, and we have to go back to the currency of God. And Jews, of all people, should know, a rabbi of all people should know what is the currency of God. Claiming that Allah will destroy the U.S. economic system. I never said that. <laughs> I said that the, we're coming for an economic decline. Uh, we need to, and I said the paper money will get destroyed. We need to start buying gold, silver, and I'm not saying this, thousands and hundreds of thousands of Americans are saying, that this paper might become useless. We need to buy a start buying gold and silver. Yes, I stand by that. That's the money of God. God's money, you could say. God, the money that God. Anything other than that which is cash. I still stand by that. Muslims need to start living, having security systems, systems of firearms. Duh! Of course we do. Because we are the victims. We need to be, we've been colonized for 400 years. Right, we and a Muslim is very uncomfortable with the thought of firearms because he's so enslaved. And it just so happens that just a few days ago, like literally two, three days ago, I was taking shura with a brother about uh, an, an organization that is specifically meant to help Muslims get security and learn firearms and to make Muslims stand up because the first command was ikra, read, read the book of Allah, and number two. Ya yuhal mudassir, ya yuhal muzammil, qum, qum, stand up for yourself, right? Muslims need to learn to stand up for themselves. I stand by that statement even now. Muslims need to start having systems of security and systems of firearms. And I believe when I said this system, this particular statement, it was in regards to misajids. You have to really think about the safety of your Muslim community. Oh, what's, did I say something wrong? Should I not be? You want to directly quote me on this? I sh did I say something wrong? You have to really think about the safety of your Muslim community, Bloch said. Warning that churches are already armed. Yes, many churches are already armed. Many Christians are already ready. They are ready. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? If they weren't so brainwashed by people like you. If you live in the suburbs, the neighbor to your right and the neighbor to your left those that love Trump don't necessarily love you that much. Yes, that could be a problem in a financial crisis because they'll be coming knocking on the door of the Muslim and he won't be ready because the Muslim wants to be civilized in the way of, uh, oh, we're all good people, but you don't realize that under behind this suit and coat, Muslims have not yet realized behind this suit and coat is sometimes many monsters. This is a very good opportunity, the Imam said, adding that these neighbors will become desperate after six or seven months of the financial crisis. That can happen. And who would disagree with anybody who disagrees with me on that is stupid. Okay. He also posted a video on March 13th titled Coronavirus Man-Made or God Sent, in which Bloch claimed that 9-11 attacks carried out on 2000 were a false flag operation. Duh! Of course it was. It doesn't fit the facts. Oh, duh! Of course it doesn't. 
And I'm not, am I the only one that's saying, he's trying to put this as if only the Muslims are saying this. There is a University of Alaska that's done a whole seminar and, and all these academicians who said this could have not been what it's been shown to be. Okay, and I have that video on my uh, channel. Uh, Bloch was born in Chicago, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, let's see what other direct quotes he said. Uh, in his video, one year ago, he encouraged Muslims to acquire firearms. So now this is supposed to be, I guess, his punchline, right? Yes, when the New Zealand event happened, uh, I was like, hmm, Muslims should really, I mean, the economy we know is going to go down. I knew it then, right? And uh, and now you have people blaming Muslims and going and killing Muslims. Uh, noted that many Muslims are weary and afraid of, right? Because yes, we've been colonized and we don't like to stand up for our rights. As a result, you go to an average Muslim and you say, hey, we should get firearms, and they will be immediately like, oh, but what if people like this author come along and start like looking, uh, doing what they're doing? Uh, how, how could we do that? Well, the only way we're going to get out of this situation is if we actually stand up for ourselves. Read and stand up for yourself. The two early commandments given to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the video, Bloch recommended not allowing children to play with video games, but rather to take them on an Eid uh, yes, so basically on Eid, we do a sacrifice, a uh, sacrifice of an animal. And I said it's very important that little children know how to sacrifice animals, okay? And I talked some aspects of that. Now, that is something that we do uh, as a festivity, which Jews also do, you stupid rabbi! Jews do this. So he's trying to make, you know, he's trying to play the Christian mind. Right? Like, as, oh my God, what are these rituals? Right? They do the same thing. They have to uh, bring uh, the sheep and the goats and whatever uh, and animals to their temple to get sacrificed. Okay? Uh, to slaughter an animal in a way of strengthening the father-son relationship. Okay, so what's wrong with that? Bloch said that slaughtering an animal actually teaches them the worth of life. Yes. That you don't just go ahead and kill people like in a video game. This is, you know, this is something that was in your hands. It was alive. And it's very much the same with firearms. Firearms teaches people to stand up for themselves. It teaches them the value of life. It gives them self-confidence. I still stay with this, okay? And so, uh, and besides the fact, besides all arguments, it's the constitutional right of every American, including Muslim Americans, to own guns, especially if we need uh, to be able to defend ourselves, okay? So, uh, here's a Jewish guy who's not a Christian, who's writing for a Christian uh uh, Christian right-wing newspaper, the latest biblical perspective, okay, and he is lying to the Christians. And the Christians are just eating this information up and thinking it's real. They really think that there's an imam in Maryland who is doing all these things and, and, and you know, uh, with quoting this verse and then, uh, and then showing this picture and then using, uh, and then, you know, the most disturbing sermon was posted on March 22nd you know, this type of language that's a lie. And where what is he doing? What is this author doing? What is this writer doing? This guy is part was part of the Israeli army shooting at Muslims, shooting at Christians. And so, Christians need to really wake up. They have been bamboozled. They have been bamboozled. They have been tricked by these Jewish rabbis, right, into thinking what their religion tells them. Like, what breaking Israeli news, you have a rabbi writing for a Christian newspaper. Do you get this? Because they have now taught the Christians. It used to be Christians used to oppress. See, that was one extreme where they were oppressing the Jews because Jews killed their God, according to them. And now it is Jesus was a Jew. You have to, you have to, you have to, uh, you know, pray for the seed of Abraham. The Jews are the chosen people. Don't touch them. Let Israel do whatever they want. We America are not, this is what the right wing Christian, the largest block of America is doing right now. This is how brainwashed they are, right? They got the Schofield Bible that is basically a Jewish Bible that is then used to teach Christians about the importance of Israel. And this is a whole discussion that I'll have one day, but I want to continue right now. So, you have this uh, Jewish guy, um, 
Then you have this uh, Hisham Shihab, who also writes an article about me. Uh, and there are many others. I think there are plenty of other articles about me. Islamist hate preacher warns Muslims to arm themselves amid coronavirus threats. Uh, you know, I challenge any of these two. Come, 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 and let's talk. Let's talk. You think you got something? Let's talk. All you're going to do, if I'm wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. Okay? I have no problem with that. But here's the, here's the thing. You have the Yahud, right? Brainwashing the Christians. And you got the Munafiq, or I don't know what, this guy is a Christian now, I think. Uh, Hisham, Shihab. But basically a Munafiq type people. These are the biggest problems we have. These leaders, these writers, they talk that are, that are quote unquote Muslims or once were Muslims, and now I know better, and I was recruited by people at the age of 13 to kill other people. Whatever, okay? Get a life. Uh, now, uh, this is the same person. Who, uh, this guy, he, he, Shem, she, 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 uh, you know, he's writing for this church, okay? Um, now, what I want to show you is this. What did Jesus say? You know, all these right-wing Christians, these Jewish-loving Christians, not that there's anything wrong with being Jewish, but there's something wrong with being a ultra-Zionist where you don't even care about what's right and what's wrong. The Jews can do anything that they want, and no matter what they do, whether it's right or wrong, God's going to bless it. That's what's wrong. You know what Jesus, you know the Wailing Wall? You, because the Christians believe that we're going to build a temple where the Wailing Wall is, and when the temple is built, then Jesus will come down and he will rule the world. Well, let me tell you something what the Jesus said about the, the Wailing Wall. It's not the temple. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, okay, as Jesus left the temple and was walking away, his disciples came up to him and to point out its building. So they're pointing out the building of the temple. And Jesus says, do you see all these things? You see all these buildings? You see this temple over here? He said, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be toppled. So this wailing wall that Jews are praying to is not part of the temple. Do you get it? Jesus said, it will be toppled. It will be gone. Okay, while Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign of your coming? And at the end of the end of age, when will these things happen? Meaning, when will it happen that this building, the temple, will completely topple? It happened in 70 AD. It was completely Joseph, jo Josephine, who was the historian, he wrote, said there was nothing remaining. In fact, that's not even where the temple is, where they are crying right now. Okay? The Wailing Wall is not where the temple is. The temple was, okay, in the city of David. Just need to do a little research. They're trying to build the temple in the wrong place, and Christians don't even understand this. So how is Jesus going to come back if you build the temple in the wrong place? So, uh, Christians need to really study their, their Bible. That's all i got to say, right? Okay, but here's the other thing. While Christians are blindly protecting the Zionists, what are the Zionists doing? They're building alliances with America, with, with, with an alternative American, I won't call it enemy, but definitely a nemesis of some sort. China's belt and the road, what's in it for Israel? Israel is supporting China, is investing with China on this Silk Road that helps China and helps Israel, but does not help the United States of America. So if you claim to love America and stand up for America and care for America and all those things about America, then you should not be okay with Israel doing this. You should be critical of Israel rather than just thinking everything that they do is okay and the will of God, because it's not. Killing innocent children is not the will of God, okay? And then you got these people telling you what to think when they themselves when they themselves have are doing exactly what you know, they 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 trying to come out with this civilized like suit and tie but behind this suit and tie are many timer monsters what the quran teaches us you will surely find the most intense of people in animosity towards the believers to be the jews okay and those who associate others with god this is in the quran by the way i'm reading and you will find the nearest of them in affection to the believers, those who say we are Christians. We Muslims believe that 
there is a possibility of affection between Muslims and Christians, not in terms of we agree with each other in terms of religion, but in terms of relationship. Yes, this is because among them are priests and monks and because they are not arrogant. They're not arrogant. Many Christians are not arrogant deep down, but they have been blindsided in the modern age by these rabbis and Jews writing for their newspapers and then they end up getting the wrong information. Okay, so now, what do, what do I want in all of this? Well, what I want is that uh, uh, Muslims, if they can click that link and make it clear to the audience that in, in, in the way of the, the Prophet taught us to approach other people and talk to other people, that no, this, this writer is a liar, okay? And this writer needs to be fired. And that this writer uh, is, 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 is and, and just and educate the people uh, in a proper way. If you want to do that, you can do that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, you know, pray for me and uh, my family and uh, khair, inshallah. Um, I will end here today, inshallah. Um, but, you know, this is, this is what's happening. Uh, this is the type of disinformation that goes out and uh, people think that they got true information and then they will act upon that true information not and playing someone else's agenda. Like if, you know, if you were to do something, uh, you're not playing your agenda. You're playing someone else's agenda, a completely wrong agenda. Anyway, I will end here. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I do want to say before I end, inshallah, that one way you can support me is by um, making people aware of this channel and uh, inshallah getting more people to subscribe and making them aware, sharing with them my videos, and so on and so forth, inshallah, jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our uh, fasting and all of our um, uh, our ibadah, our du'as, inshallah ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help Muslims be um, true Muslims uh, coming out of this Ramadan, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum. So, I'll end here. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.